Well, the Free State Government is giving an update on the province's handling of the second wave of the coronavirus. Free State Premier Sisin Tombela and Health MEC Munseng Tziu will uh, are briefing uh, currently. Actually, she's on the podium, the MEC Tziu uh, media on behalf of the Provincial Coronavirus Command Council. Let's take you there live. At 2,788 and a lady at 629. Taking the population distribution in Mangawung, the distribution of infections is proportional to the population of Mangawung. Lijuele Putwa district, the district is the second standing at 14,150 cumulative uh, cases. Machabeng being at the top having exceeded the 10,000 mark and Tukuluho being the lowest with only 447 confirmed cases. The mining industry played a big role towards the situation as most of its workforce are the migrant laborers from other areas in our country. The possibility is that some might be imported cases. Tabom Futsanyana district the district has reached a 12,684 mark, raising serious concern as communities there are mostly underprivileged and do not have adequate access to amenities. The social determinants on health contribute towards uh, the fight against the virus as basic commodities such as water supply is sometimes uh, not there consistently. Maluti Apofung is highly populated and presents challenges of the implementation of non-pharmaceutical protocols such as social distancing and self-isolation in cases of need. The situation presents a challenge for the health system to maintain absolute ideal interventions to absorb the community. However, government is doing everything possible within its powers to mitigate the challenges. Fezile Dabi District. The district stands at 9,277 confirmed cases, with Mokaka being the highest, with 3,293, and Metsimahulu not being very far at 3,142. These two are the most developed areas in the district with highest number of population. The situation was exacerbated by cluster outbreaks at some boarding schools around the district and its proximity to other provinces like Gauteng. Some of its residents are migrant laborers working in some provinces. Karib district, the district is standing at 4,001 confirmed positive cases. Kopanom being the highest with 1,877 confirmed cases. And the district proximity to the Eastern Cape, which at some stage led the country in the number of positive cases, also influenced the situation. Communities are quite interacting and share a lot of com commonalities and activities. In summary, Tabo Mfutsangana and Fezile Dabi have become two centers of attraction at this point especially during the second wave of infections. This is depicted from the latest daily infections appearing in the discussions to follow. Infections in communities, the provincial daily infections uh, as of the 18th, uh, we said we, we had uh, in the past 24 hours uh, 379 new cases and Mangaum Metro got 76. Fezile Dabi 121, Tabo Mufuzanyana 97. So this shows the two districts that are getting uh, daily new cases in the new in this new uh, the second wave that get the highest numbers is Fezile Dabi and Tabo Mufuzanyana. 67 in Lujale Putwa, 18 Harip, uh, none is not allocated. The total confirmed cases we said for the province cumulatively, we are standing at 70,891 with 59,268 recoveries and uh, that uh, accounts for 84% recoveries. We, we, we have deaths, uh, 2,473 reported in the province till to date and the highest fatality uh, is reported in the district of Lejoleputwa. 
the provincial uh, fatality rate is at 3.5 percent. We, uh, we indeed, like I said, striving that we get our people recovered, but unfortunately some do lose their lives. The population ages between 30 and 34 years remain the most vulnerable and at risk of the infections. The infections on health workers. Health workers as frontline staff were severely affected by the virus and unfortunately others succumbed to the virus. Despite fatigue and risk, they are exposed, exposed to they continue to serve our communities with dedication and distinction. The following is the statistics on the impact of the virus on the health workforce. The, in the public sector, we have people that uh, were, were infected by the virus. It's 3,685 health workers that were affected. And the active cases at this point is 334. The recovered, the recovered is 3,048 and the disease is 50. In the private sector, we have those that were uh, infected is standing at 342 and we have uh, case active cases 4, recovered cases is 335 and 3, uh, it's di they, they are diseased. Uh, Total number of the people that uh, the health workers that got infected stands at 4,027, and active cases is 338, and recovered is 3,383, and deceased we have 53. The admissions in the hospitals, the cumulative dat data is that we are having 9,000. Cumulatively, 9,542 admissions to date in the province. And currently having, at this point, 636 hospitalized patients. We have 69 in ICU, 59 on ventilation, and 291 are on the high oxygen. Yeah. Availability of the PPE. The province is thus far not uh, is thus far not experiencing any challenges with the PPEs uh, and we remain alert to avoid depletion or shortages. Together with the labor unions, we are monitoring the situation and with the help of the occupational health and safety committees that we have established, we are trying to keep the situation under control. The risk within the province we cannot overlook the effect of the mining industry in our province. Remember that most of our workers are coming from outside the province and most of them during the holidays went home and uh, now they are coming back and that may have an impact in the increase of the infections within the province. As the province, we are getting ourselves for the situation and prepared uh, to make sure that our teams are ready to receive the people that would be coming from home and coming with the infections. We are, we are able to deal with the numbers that uh, come as, as we work together with our district teams. Of course, we should not overlook and underestimate the impact of coronavirus on the health resources and its impact on the ability of the health system to provide health services for the general population the non-pharmaceutical protocols. In the absence of any treatment for COVID-19, for now, non-pharmaceutical protocols remain the only best way to fight the virus. We are pleased to see that some of these protocols, such as wearing of masks in public, are now enforceable and people can be arrested. And indeed, we have seen the improvement. Many people are now wearing their masks. And we know that uh, they, they are really complying and this might, might is going to help us a lot in the fight against the COVID-19. The other thing that people must continue doing is the washing of hands for at least 20 seconds in running water and also or use of, of the, uh, the, the sanitizers. In conclusion, I want to emphasize the words of the Premier um, 
who would be talking, uh, who have been talking to us around this issue in our uh, provincial command council, co talking to the citizens of this province to help keep the spread of the virus. Lastly, let me announce that <coughs> we are about to receive the first batch of the vaccine. And the provincial rollout plan is ready. The health workers will be the first batch of the frontline workers to receive the vaccine. Logic will tell you that it is important to first prioritize soldiers in the battlefield to continue with the struggle. I thank you and I want to invite questions and inputs from the media and the community at large. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC, responsible for health in the Free State Province, uh, Honorable uh, Monsensiu, for that uh, detailed uh, update, which really demonstrates the hard work <coughs> which uh, the department under your leadership and the province broadly under the sterling leadership and visionary leadership of the People's Premier, Messi Sintombele continues to do in ensuring that our people in the province remain safe and we are at the forefront of ensuring that we turn the corner in our response mechanisms towards this particular process. Just to remind our colleagues who are not joining us here, who are joining us remotely, that they can catch this particular update live <coughs> on the following social media platforms, on Facebook, uh, you can catch it live on the Free State Provincial Government Facebook page. You can also get it on the Free State Department of Health uh, Facebook page. On Twitter, uh, it is at uh, state underscore channel. Uh, we can also get it uh, on our local community radio stations as well as SABC Channel 404 and Free State Online. And uh, as indicated, we are encouraging all our colleagues, particularly in the media, who would want to uh, send some questions to do so through our link, the link that we have given them through our media statement which we issued earlier on in the week in the Microsoft Teams. And colleagues, maybe just to also introduce uh, one of the panelists who will be, who's joining us now is Dr. Grace London, who is uh, the Chief Director of District Health System, who will uh, be part of the support staff. I think it's important, uh, Honorable MEC, to always uh, indicate that, as you have already indicated, that one of the most important responses is the non-pharmaceutical intervention which must be used together at all material times. That is uh, to wash your hands regularly with soap and running water uh, and uh, or sanitize. At least when you wash your hands it must be at least for about uh, 20 seconds. Wear your mask consistently like I do. It is quite important that we must do all of these things together and to maintain social distance at all material times. Those are the most effective measures in terms of ensuring that we prevent this particular pandemic. <coughs> uh, well, we will we'll invite the, the questions to, to the panel that is here. Maybe just to remind all of us that we have the MEC responsible for health, the Honorable Memon Tengtiu, and uh, we also have uh, the MEC responsible for COCTA, Honorable Tembisa Mangisa, as well as Dr. Grace Landan, who is the Chief Director responsible for District Health System. Um, uh, we will invite uh, hands whilst uh, we were waiting for our colleagues to finalize the technical aspects with regards to the Honorable Premier, who will be joining us shortly. Uh, without wasting time, we will we'll invite the first round. Please remember to indicate uh, your name as well as the name of the media house which you represent. <coughs> um, uh, th those who will be doing so online through our Microsoft link, please also indicate your name as well as the media house which you represent. Uh, we will uh, we'll open up for, for questions. Uh, all right, we'll take one. Um, and then, uh, all right, we, we can go ahead whilst we are receiving others uh, from the, uh, our colleagues. Um, 
Okay, thanks very much, Mepal uh, uh, from SABC. Mr. Bandilan Do I have any? Uh, without repeating some of the questions, because they are quite similar to what you just raised. Uh, the first one is uh, who will be receiving the vaccine phase one of the vaccination program? Uh, has the free state reached the peak of its resurgence? Second question. The third question. What has happened to the additional COVID-19 capacity that has been created in the free state in terms of the uh, research capacity bed Then lastly, how many people will be vaccinated in the free state and when will the vaccination plan be communicated? <coughs> okay. No, 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 thanks very much. Uh uh, co colleagues, I think uh, without wasting time, we'll give the the leadership the, 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 the opportunity to respond to the questions. I think we'll also be able to give the second round if necessary, uh, whilst we, we are waiting the <coughs> the connectivity for the Honourable Premier. Uh, we will welcome Dr. Grace London, who will uh, will be taking us uh, through in terms of responding to the questions. As indicated, she's the chief director for the district health systems in the province of the first state. Doc. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, Doc, if, if, if perhaps you could come the side so that uh, you're able to be captured. Thanks. I hope I'm audible. I don't want to remove my mask. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I've already passed my regards to our Honorable MECs. Uh, good morning, colleagues and ladies and gentlemen. So I'll be taking the questions on behalf of the Department of Health. I think the first question was that um, there's been, um, I think, a downward trend on infection around the country. And I think it has been mentioned that Free State, is re free state and Northern Cape is actually not going down. Um, let me start by saying that um, <clears throat> what we have seen in the first wave is that uh, the bigger provinces, they tend to peak uh, faster than the small provinces. And the reason sometimes that you see the smaller provinces uh, start to peak a bit later is, is actually due to numerous of things. If you look at this, the beginning of the second wave, uh, the, the bigger provinces were carrying majority of, of the provinces, but once we start seeing a lot of traveling taking place during the festive season and during the super spreader events that the president and the minister were worried about, that's when we start seeing some of the infection picking. So we can actually pick where these clusters have started. But however, if you look at the free state in terms of the number of infection, free state actually was around 100 when other provinces were picking, and then the infection now started to pick uh, go to 300, 500, and then and so on. So this was in the past two weeks. So we looked at the weak infection, weak infection. So we look at every week how the infection. But if you look at the past two weeks, really, we are now starting to see, is we are not saying we are reaching the, the resurgence or we are reaching the peak, but we are starting to see the number that are increasing. So just to add a little bit, um, in Free State, uh, there are five districts. There are two districts that we are actually starting to see that they actually the numbers are not really reaching a peak, 
but they are actually still increasing. And we can actually attribute to different things. I'll, the first district is Harib district. We've picked up that particular specific towns in Harib. They are still actually reaching the peak. And this is contributed by the borders between the Eastern Cape. And we've actually encouraged the district directors of the counterparts of the two provinces to start having these interprovincial meetings because we can pick up that in Rastron we are having a lot of numbers. That's, Rastron is just closer to Stack Sprite, and there's a lot of movement between these two towns. So we can actually pick, if we look at Malutia Pofum, which is in Tabumfuzanyan, we actually see that there's still some cross border that are taking place. Uh, some of the borders are not tightly controlled, but we also picked up that. Um, for people from Lesotho to cross to South Africa, they need to have a negative result. But we've also picked up, there's already a scam of people who are already passing the borders with in, incorrect information. So we've also encouraged the district directors to have these co- cross-border meetings that we used to have uh, weekly during that. So <laughs> in Free State, there are two particular districts where you see this high infection, but a district like Mangaum Metro, for example, we are sitting to see the numbers going down, and as well as Lejoli uh, Puto, which, of course, at some point, the numbers were high, but they were contributed by the mining area when the mining people were coming back. So in Free State, yes, the numbers are still high, but we are starting to see a decline in other districts. So this, I think I gave more information <laughs> than what was asked. So I'll then move to the second question. I think the second question was, how many vaccines will the free state actually receive? Because the Eastern Cape has already indicated that they will be receiving uh, 3 million vials. Um, in the free state, I think the MEC has already indicated that, and I think this is a rollout for everyone in the country, that all provinces will be prioritizing uh, the healthcare workers and other essential workers. So in the free state, we have already started with the public sector. So we are finalizing the number. So as yet, we don't know how many vials, but we've already indicated that we have this many people in the public sector, which is our healthcare workers. We were yet to meet. We have another meeting today where we'll be finalizing with the private sector as well um, so that we can have the confirmed number of. But roughly in our public sector, we have about 22,000 uh, healthcare workers. So we still have to add the numbers, but also the essential way. So that will be finalized today with the National Department of Health. So we don't have the definite figure, but we already know how many people need to be vaccinated. So that will include also essential workers from other departments like your teachers and the police. So that number is yet to be finalized today with National Department of health. So we'll get the definite figure. I think the third question um, was that um, how many people are we expecting to vaccinate in the free state? And I think comes from Facebook. Um, I think according to the brief from the minister and with uh, the scientific knowledge uh, that is available for us to actually w- to reach what we call herd immunity. It means majority of the vulnerable populations, they are protected, but they also have produced antibodies to protect themselves against a further infection. So we were advised that 67 of the population should actually be vaccinated. So I think in the free state, we have estimated about 1.9 million. So in total, that includes inclusive of the healthcare workers. So in the free state, I think it's about 67%. 1.9 people against the population of 2.9, we are expecting to actually for them to reach uh, to be vaccinated so that the, the province can actually reach a uh, herd immunity. I think there was another question on whether the free state has reached uh, the surge. Yes, we are in the surge because when we look at the data, that what I was trying to explain is that when we look at the infection, we look at different weeks. We actually compare different weeks, the infections that we get per, per day, but we also look at the week, which is what we call seven-day moving average. So we look at every day, are the infections increasing? Are we on the surge? And how we know that we are on the surge is that we looked at, compared to a previous week, how many numbers of infections we have. Did we increase by 10%? So if we increase by 10%, they say we are, we are almost at the surge. But when we look at the numbers that we used to have, for example, in December compared to January, they have actually increased by more than 20%. So when the number of infections increase by more than 20%, you have risk the surge. And comparing the numbers that we used to have in December and now in January, we are definitely in the surge. Our numbers have increased by more than 20% in most of the district, even on average in the province. So we are on the surge in terms of the numbers, comparing every week in and week out in terms of the number of infections. I think I've covered all the questions. I'll take follow-ups. Okay, let's see.
Uh, th thanks very much, uh, Dr. Grace London, for the comprehensive responses which you have provided to the questions which were posed by our colleagues. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, all of us will appreciate that uh, the disruption which has been caused by COVID-19 has brought about the new normal. Uh, uh, it's, it's quite significant. And sometimes even if you have faith and hope in the system, sometimes uh, there will always be those particular glitches, as, as is the case in point today, you know, with, uh, with the, the technical challenges which we had earlier on uh, to connect with the Premier. But uh, what led to indicate to all our people uh, that uh, the Premier of the Free State Province, the activist uh, provincial government of our province, the champion uh, of our provincial response, uh, the, the Honourable Premier Siforan Tombella is now uh, ready to, to address uh, the people of the Free State in terms of uh, where we are uh, currently. Over to, to the Premier. Uh, once We should be going in, in, in a moment. Uh, it is important also, we're still waiting to remind our people that uh, you can catch us on the following social media pages uh, on Facebook at Free State Provincial Government Facebook page, Free State Department of Health Facebook page, Free State Online and on Twitter at State underscore channel and uh, all our local community radio stations, as well as SABC Channel 404. And uh, we can never overemphasize the importance of the following non-pharmaceutical interventions which must be used together at all times. Uh, uh, that is washing of hands regularly with soap and running water for at least 20, min uh, 20 seconds, or to sanitize, and the wearing of masks consistently, and to maintain social distance. And it's important that we must do all of these non-pharmaceutical interventions all together. Uh, uh, whilst we, 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 are, we are waiting, uh, technology which uh, seems to be disrupting and giving us a new normal as well of its own, I, I think we can, we can uh, take... Uh, the other round of questions, if we have in the house, uh, or we can, uh, if, if we have in the, through our social media platform. Uh, do, we, do we have uh, any, any other questions and answers, uh, questions, so that the, the panel can respond to them? Uh, certainly, what we have, well, we, we, we seem to have succeeded, ultimately. Uh, uh, to, to have the mother of uh, the province no. speaking to us uh, and addressing uh, our people. Okay, Honourable Premier, w welcome to, to the session. I know that you've been joining us. Um, uh, we, we will be giving you an opportunity as the, the champion of the province, as the political head who has always provided the necessary visionary leadership to our province at all times, and who has ensured that uh, we really uh, sail through this particular storm successfully uh, to address your people in the province of the Free State. Over to you, Honorable Premier. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. It's a pity uh, because now we had a problem. 
Africa technology. But today I wanted us to start our media in a very different way. Uh, uh, I have just received a very uh, bad news that I've lost one of my cousins, Ngothana um, Mia, now due to COVID-19. I have just received a message and I thought maybe we are definitely going to start uh, with a short prayer, but unfortunately, uh, uh, the MEC has already uh, said something, but indeed I feel deep down in my heart that we should have started with a prayer, a very short prayer. A uh, 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 program director, Lehanka Katsamaya Hosonya Muritua Difu, Nkebe Katsuha Bobil Habulibo, Kobani Unalina, Lirila Hai Lisi Kokotel Sahai, Kitsonat in Tisa, Utekata Fulep Laka, Pontenya Gataka, Ukotite Hoyaka Oli, Mopoka Waka Pera. Kuri lili khono no le mahau dintse dintatela ka ditshutso se tsa go phela kwa ntate modimo o setse re dientse ntse mpe re kopa tshwarelo re tshwarele ame program director MEC of Department of Health me monsentiu MCs that are present present here, Ntate uh, Radikwantana, our DG, members of the media that are working so hard, the senior managers in the government and other sectors, Batuba uh, Frey Stata, Jumelang, Ilelaka Leza Samasono Nama Atlas Limose Seja. Program Director, it was just under a year ago when the Free State recorded its first COVID-19 case. A medical technologist who worked in a several hospital in Bloemfontein tested positive for coronavirus. Thereafter, life in the Free State, there I say the world, has never been the same. Immediately thereafter, we experienced an explosion of cluster outbreak from a church prayer meeting, which hosted a number of international guests in Bloemfontein. Family outbreaks in Betuli and school outbreaks in Sosovec. That was the of our problems in the free state. A consistent theme throughout the free state fight against COVID-19 have been infectiveness and speed, and, speed, and speed at the which our health care workers contain the spread through strategic use of quarantine sites and aggressive content, contact tracing and monitoring. We pride ourselves in the public health system specifically for putting the well-being of our people first. Our health workers worked very hard and they were very much committed in the free state. This is a very difficult time in the course of the pandemic. As South of infections, admission, admission to hospitals, and death recorded in all of our districts. I'm sure that the MEC now things are becoming bad in our hospitals in the present. The virus has, in the recent past, been spreading in an alarming rate across the, our province. We are seeing the younger generation being infected due to their lifestyle choice. Unfortunately, 
kubani jola haba tuwa kante bake na kama tu bafite la uge bake nyabo mme mme ba nzeba itulezi kama tu libo ndate basina yona suwa ito ina kika hori pile za mwuri kia kupa bacha jintote na za hori kukwa panwe kante huye tuwe di klapa huye tuwe ing mututu mwaju wale hadiri tuwe limu limu diri bake la matata aki liye niseng hanyani fela kadi ntote nu senze ni kidieza Of course, MEC Usabuile, for that year, as from the 19th of January 2020, of course, Rukule the statistics are now at the moment at the full state. We have 70,891 people that are affected in the free state. And of course, we have yet that uh, 9,750 people are admitted. And the petrol government admitted about 9,750. It doesn't mean at the moment we have 9,750. It means okay, already the petrol government private and even our own hospitals, but to bus and baba admitted the baba can. Unfortunately, the last year to give about 2,473. Give us one man at Hulu, Banu Masa Maide. And I'm sure. Okay, Uh, we, we, we seem to, to, to be experiencing technical problems as well, uh, but we are live in question. front. Right. But, but, but the, critical question to, the critical question to us is, where do our communities find themselves today? Approximately nine months since the first lockdown began. We have witnessed this, many of us being infected. Many of us have been infected. Ladies and gentlemen, the areas that we, in recent weeks, experiencing higher than average rates of new infection are Lijue Liputua district and Mangawun district. district. However, the situation seems to be changing as there are no clear hotspots now. The cases are spreading across the local areas and townships. We have contained the situation, but the war is far from over. With the technical advice from of the provincial coronavirus command, action are being taken and closely monitored development and institution measures to hold the further spread of infection. On meetings of the Premier's coordinating forum, on the January 12th, I convened a successful meeting of all mayors of As you can see, there are technical issues there. We're going to come out of the Free State COVID-19 update hosted by uh, Premier Sisi Ndombela and also the Health MEC uh, Manzeng Munzeng Tziu. There are um, some of the takeaways uh, that the Tabo Mufutsanyane and Fezile Dabi uh, districts are becoming problematic and uh, on, uh, on, on a daily basis more numbers coming out from there but also the Health MEC confirming there that uh, they are awaiting their first batch of the vaccine so the rollout seemingly well underway in south africa but of course uh, we still await official uh, information especially with that ministerial task team that was set up by the president announced yesterday